in this big box is a 3D printer and it's completely different from what I have behind me here and what I have in the other room. So I can get this thing on box. We're going to see if there's any assembly required. We're going to get it fired up. I'm Roger. Welcome to the loft above the shop. I got me a new 3D printer here and we're going to get this thing on box and you'll get to see what it is. So we have a box inside a box. The best way here I'm limited on space is just cut down one side and take the box out of the box. I know why they do this. It protects it a little bit better in shipping. So you're going to get to see the grand reveal here. It's an Xmart 3 Kitty Tech. That's Q-I-D-I Tech. So let's see if I can't get some of this moved around here. So now we have Another box, and I knocked a bunch of stuff down. Okay, I'll get this box open. So I know it's a little difficult to see what I've got here. That camera angle, there's a styrofoam insert here on top that has a bunch of stuff in it. And I'll get that in camera range here after I get the rest of this out of the box. This is already in an enclosure. And the best way again here is going to be cut the box down the side. Because I am by myself, so there's nobody to hold the box still while I try to lift the printer out. Still got more unpacking to do here. Yeah, there's some packing tape, of course, on here, and there was a bag on here. We got all that off. Get all this tape removed. The front is facing the camera right now cover here on the top is removable. It says right there to use to remove that when using PLA or TPU. So uh, if I'm using ABS or PETG I will have the cover on. And there looks like there's some other unpacking things to do in here. There's a cable tie around the print head itself that I'll need to cut and get off of there. And there is some cardboard packing in there. Work area here is 185 by 185. And there are some screws on the bed down there that need to be removed. And I'll have to get me a little alien wrench to do that. We'll set this cover back in here for the moment. Move this over. I'll show you what comes on the rest of it here. So here's what's in the top of it you have a manual here which I will probably look at. There is a little flash drive that is taped down in there. Watch you don't miss that. Flash drive has a uh, I guess it's just a flash drive. I thought I had an SD card in it. It's just a flash drive. We'll see what's on that later. Of course you have a power cord. A scraper. This will be the spool holder which goes someplace. And you get uh, some tools here. And some screws. Extra fuse. Extra nozzle. And some little alien wrenches. And a sample spool of filament. That's all we have in there. Very little assembly required on this printer which is kind of refreshing. There are four little screws that need to be removed here. And I'm using a ball driver just because it's more convenient for me. There's some little stickers there that, tell you, that point out the screws and they look like this. It's just for shipping. There's also a cable tie up here on this front corner. I know you can't see it there but when you uh, open up your printer you'll see that. that it's on the uh, x-axis that'll need to be removed. And I'm looking to make sure there's nothing in there that doesn't belong in there. Everything looks good. Spool holder. This mounts on the back. We'll place right here. It just goes in and slides down. Of course your power cord will go in down here. And I do have the top cover off for now. Set that somewhere where I won't sit on it. So we have film a run out sensor here. Then you have a Bowden tube right here, runs in, runs into the top. First thing the, it tells you to plug it in. I'm not using the cord that came with it. I've got a cord that I just keep up here. 
and well, I guess it was already on, and there's a screen on the front. Get this turned around so hopefully the camera can see that screen. And I'll have to get around there so I can see the screen. Okay, to tell you, booting up. Please wait. Nicely lit inside. And right now the language is selected in Chinese, and I don't think I want that. Because I don't understand that too well. So let's flip this over here to English. Click Next. They so remove the zip tie. Did that. Be careful not to scratch your carbon fiber rods up there. Remove the four screws that are in the bed. Did that. Make sure the platform is clean and unlocked. Well, it appears to be pretty clean. It is removable, magnetic. You know, if I need to, I will clean that further. It says it's going to move the platform, and it's moving it. These guys here that are down there, you take those out. Then we'll hit next. Now we wait for the initiation of the platform and nozzle. Okay, they give you a little paper to use to level this, but I'm going to have to go get it. Okay, so I have the special paper. You know it's special paper because it says so. So I get to slip this in here. I want the nozzle to be just touching that. And it is. So I don't need to move it up or down. Next here. It's running its calibration. It's uh, in step three or four right here. It's stopped here for some reason and I don't know, maybe thinking. Well, a fan came on in there and it's making some noise, so it must be warming up. Okay, just so you know, if you're starting one of these up, that step three takes a long time to complete itself. We'll get here. It's now it's uh, tells you to load filament. I'm not going to use the uh, spool they sent with it. I've got a short piece off of another spool that's already open, so I'm going to load that. And it, it's pretty kind of self-explanatory. You uh, feed your filament through the runout sensor, and then. You keep feeding it up through the Bowden tube until it reaches the head. So here's the, here's the piece I'm going to be loading in here. And if you're new to loading these, something that's good to do is to cut the end of your filament at a sharp angle so you have a point on it. It makes it a lot easier to load. Okay, I push that all the way till it stopped. And we'll click the next arrow here. And right now we're at 22 degrees C, so I need to put on there, we want to take that to 200 C. Whoops, that jumps in a hurry if you keep your hand on it. And we'll hit next. And you have to ensure that the filament is into the extruder, and you click the below button to load it until it comes out of the hot end. So i got to get down here so I can see that. So we'll click this here. Well, you have to keep pushing that. It only runs a little bit at a time. Okay, made a nice little pile of filament on the plate in there. So now we click Next. Guy tutorial finished. So i got a little pile of filament to get off of there. It does run a homing cycle here. It comes home. USB port on the lower front corner down here, and I'm going to plug the uh, flash drive that they sent with this in there. So I assume that there is a file on there of some type for a test print. So there are some icons on the side here, and see what all we got here has slicer software in there. We don't want that. I'll have to see if this is, uh, there's a profile for this Akira. I'll do that here in a minute. A little file here for a sample of something. It's in Chinese, but we'll click on that. I guess we'll hit go. 
and we'll see what it makes. Watching the nozzle heat up, this nozzle heats up really fast. I'm impressed with that. And it's heating the nozzle first. And it does not appear to be heating the bed. I guess maybe they think this doesn't need a heated bed for this. We're going to find out real quick if this sticks or not. Well, it appears to be sticking just fine. This is a little different than uh, my other 3D printers. All my other ones, the Z-axis moves up and down with the uh, extruder. On this one, the bed moves up and down, and the uh, extruder only operates on the X-axis. I can't really get a good shot of inside there, but uh, we'll let this print a while and we'll see what we get. Okay, I can see without that bed being heated that uh, it didn't stick. It, the print came loose. Of course, I may need to clean that bed too, so I'm going to do both. And we'll, I'm also going to relocate this so I can uh, use my table for my laptop. So as you can see there, that did not stick. Okay, I did relocate it and I cleaned the bed with some alcohol. Um, it's 90% isopropyl alcohol. And I set the bed to be heated at 60C because uh, we have a rather cool ambient up here. And that's where I run all my other printers at. And now it appears to be sticking just fine, so we'll let that go through. I'll get on my laptop here and find out if there's a profile in Cura for this printer. So, like ding, fries are done here, I guess. So we'll take this out. I was surprised that it printed a full cube with it being hollow inside. There's no support inside, and yet it printed a very nice top. We'll take this out, and this is what we have here. And this is a hollow cube. There is no support inside. I am really impressed that it, it did that without this sagging. Now, before I start my next project, I'm going to have to load some film. I just had that little scrap on there before. So from the menu here, there's a little guy here that's got a little wrench by it. Click on that, and then there's a manual that says load. So I can unload my filament from here. So you press the side button on the extruder to cut off the filament. Then click on the button below to and wait for unloading. So there's a button on the side of the extruder. So that cuts the filament off and I should be able to pull that back out from the back there. Yep, pulls right out. And now I push this little arrow here. I have to start to preheat the filament in there. Unload it. And while that's heating up, I'll get my filament prep that I'm going to be putting in there. Been a couple of weeks since I did the first part of this video, so this is like many, many days later. But I wanted to run this through some paces to see how well it would perform. And it performs, whoops, performs very, very well. It cranks out these parts. I mean, this printer is fast and it's accurate. And what I'm doing today is a fine little test because it has the enclosure on it. The ambient temperature up here in the loft today is 58 degrees Fahrenheit. And that is way too cool to run any of these other 3D printers. I wouldn't even think about it. I would have all kinds of problems with adhesion, even though I have heated beds. And when your ambient temperature is that cold, it's really hard to get uh, any type of good adhesion or good print. So therefore, none of the other ones are running. But I do have this one running because I'm cranking out a, a few more of these. I have a lot of orders for these. So I wanted to see how well it would do with that enclosure, and I have a lid on it. You're not usually supposed to use a lid with PLA, but because it is so cold up here, or I should say cool, I want to see how well this would perform. So I, I'm sure it's going to do well. I've looked at how it's printing and everything in there is coming out just like it should. I don't have any problems with adhesion or shifting or anything else. So I thought I'd shoot the tail end of the video here. And there will be uh, some more videos coming up on this of some of the things I can do with it. So what do I think of it so far? Well, this is what really impressed me, was to be able to print this cube with no support. And this cube has a top. I mean, there's no support here. This thing's completely hollow. So I was impressed with that. 
Uh, I know my Creality printers would never do it. I would have a big sag up here on the top or maybe just an incomplete print. So it did very well there. Uh, I've run a lot of parts through this. This is the second spool I've run on this now. I've gone through a complete spool of PLA Professional White and now I have this uh, gray in there right now, PLA Professional. And I like to use the PLA Professional or PLA Plus because it has, it's a little stronger and it doesn't tend to break as easily. And I need that for quality on parts that we ship. So, if you'd like to get one of these, I will put a link in the description. I'm sure they would be happy to sell you one. See, uh, I suppose they call it Kitty. Q-I-D-I. Again, this was provided to me to demonstrate and test, and so far I'm very, very impressed with it. In fact, I may uh, look at getting one of their larger models on top of this one. The only disadvantage I found is it doesn't work in Cura. At least it doesn't have a Cura profile. And I prefer to work at Cura. They have a program called uh, Kitty Print or QIDI Print. And it is similar to Cura and it does a lot of the same things. But I, when I get to running batches, I like to do everything in the same software. So I may look into creating some type of uh, profile for myself for Cura. So if you got anything out of this, appreciate getting a thumbs up. Always helps the channel. I'm Roger in the loft above the shop where it's a mighty chilly for uh, April 30th. Should be like 80 outside, not 40. Thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next one.